Turn the TV on. What do you mean the car won't start? Did it turn over? Throw out that milk. It's turned. Look, the caterpillar turned into a butterfly. We can't leave until it's my turn to try. The snow turned to rain. Go ahead, take your turn at bat. Leave her alone. She's happy now. You had your turn. The tide turned. The world turned. His heart turned. Someday it will all turn back to me. Turn. What a remarkable word. In Advent, we always think right away of John the Baptist, right? Out there in the wilderness crying, repent. And yes, that word has with it a connotation that we should feel some sadness about the fact that we are sinful. But the word has a greater meaning, and that meaning is to turn. In other words, God doesn't want us just sitting around feeling sorry. God wants us to get moving. And few words signal action, like turn. It's the word we use to describe the bringing of our machines to life, the change of someone's feelings, the beginning of the fermentation process or, or the spoiling process, the physical actions of our planet, and yes, a change in direction. And that's what John was all about. We have for our preaching text today the unusual story of Josiah, good King Josiah, who is actually praised for being faithful to God even above King David. Josiah, who brought the people back one more time from their worship of Baal and who, who knows what other gods. Josiah, whom God loved and respected so much that Scripture tells us God pushed back the coming destruction of Israel so Josiah would not have to see it. Now the story tells us that Josiah decided to fix up the temple. The temple had fallen into disrepair under other kings who were chasing other gods. And this was, after all, supposed to be the seat of God on earth. The physical reminder to the people of Israel that God was among them. And we think in the renovation process, a scroll was discovered, a book, and we don't know which book it is. We think it's part of Deuteronomy, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, that one? Nobody joined in, oh well. <laughs> and as the book is read to Josiah, he's overcome with emotion. And he gets so excited, he calls all the people together. And the book is read to everyone. And they agree right then, right there, that they are going to live the way this book is asking them to live. The people, at least for a while, change direction. They repent. They commit to a new way. They turn. And the reign of Josiah is remembered for being long and happy. In Advent, we prepare for the coming of Jesus. We prepare for God to come and dwell with us. And it is in this coming of Jesus that we get to see what kind of people we're supposed to be. We see what it means to be truly human. We're called to recognize the worth of others, the importance of others, the fact that we're all children of God. And then we're supposed to do all that Jesus stuff, justice, mercy, feeding, healing, loving. And funny thing, as I woke up yesterday and started to fine-tune the sermon a little bit, okay, maybe I wrote a lot of it. Um, <laughs> But as I'm doing that, the first thing that pops up on my news feed, Black Friday fights show we have lost our humanity. In other words, the celebration of the one who taught us how to be human has disintegrated for some into a display of selfishness and lack of humanity. And by the way, I'm not 
criticizing any of you out there who love Black Friday. I have to tell you, your posts and your photos on Friday were making me laugh out loud. I just don't want to be there. But God is always calling this world to turn from something. And right now out there, there's this attitude that, hey, we can have a holiday, but we've kind of outgrown all the God stuff. We can handle it all now. And there's this feeling that the only thing that's real is whatever I feel, whatever I experience, whatever I want. And that this somehow is the only God worth serving, the God of pleasing ourselves. And guess what? It doesn't work. It's not working. Turning from God never does. It's into this world that our church, all of the church, is called. A world filled with people, consumed with themselves. Filled with people who don't understand why they aren't that happy. People who think, me first, me first, and then maybe someone can get some of my leftovers. A world that has forgotten how to be human. A world that needs to turn. There is light in the darkness, and no, the darkness has not overcome it. But as we wait for the light, we are called to be the light. Do not hesitate to show God's mercy, God's justice, God's love, because God gives you every day a chance to be kind to someone, and it is in this, through this, that God is revealed. Yeah, God does a big thing once in a while. There's a prophet out in the woods yelling, repent. The king finds a dusty old scroll in the temple and the people create a new covenant. But more often, the light works through people who choose to be loving, selfless, human. People who show in their actions how others can be human as well. And if you're sitting here today and you're thinking, how do I heed the call of the prophet? How do I turn to God? This is your answer. Be truly human and show others through your love how they can be the same. And if you're already doing this, great. Keep doing it. Do it some more you will be lighting candles in the darkness. And when the light comes, you'll already be basking in the glow. <laughs>